Here in Arizona, 179 kids have medical marijuana cards, and some say that number could be even higher if autism and other disorders were qualifying conditions. And only on 3TV tonight, two moms share their extreme stories with me and their positive outcomes. He would rip his clothing off of his body. I had 30 dents in my metal front door. To say Brandy Williams was a desperate parent is an understatement. I had a hole in every single door in my home. Her little boy Logan was nonstop, oftentimes trying to hurt himself. He was cocking his head back and smashing it forward on hard objects around our house. Logan was diagnosed with a severe form of autism. We caught up with Brandy in Mesa. He wouldn't sleep. He barely ate. You know, no mother should feel like a punching bag. Sharing her story with strangers. I couldn't even find a school that could work with his behaviors. That was her life before. I don't know. <laughs> what else can I say? It's, it's changed my life so much. Make it. This Piggy. is after. <gasps> I just got him into school, a public school. Go pee pee on the potty? You gotta flush it now? A night and day difference, she says, after cannabis. His teacher told me that he is the best behaved kid in her class. I never thought I would hear those words. He's saying his ABC. A, B, C. He's been seizure free. He is feeding himself. He is eating. He's gaining weight and he's singing and he's happy. Brandy was speaking on behalf of a group called Mom Force AZ, a grassroots organization that meets in a casual setting every month to spread their message. Cannabis has changed our entire lives. They advocate for pot instead of pills, like the heavy antipsychotic Logan was prescribed. What I do know is that too many people are taking too many pharmaceuticals. Kathy Inman is the founder of Mom Force, convinced those who have kids with autism and other disorders should know cannabis is an option. We are uh, parents and concerned citizens that are standing up for cannabis education, harm prevention, and whole health solutions. It is a belief, though, many in the medical community currently do not endorse. My heart goes out to parents of kids who, with special needs, and especially um, kids who, where the diagnosis doesn't have a clear treatment associated with it, like autism. Dr. Dale Guthrie is a pediatrician in Gilbert. I don't judge people for trying to go out and find something to help their kids, but, but as I research this, my concern is that we have now really good research that shows the dangers of using marijuana products in, in young people. The research he's referring to shows kids who use marijuana in their teens will lose eight IQ points by the time they're in their 20s. That sounds small, but uh, we know that it changes the brain. Why does it do that? Because kids, their brain is still what we call plastic. Plasticity means that it's still forming, it's still changing, it's still developing. Well, having to watch your child suffer isn't easy. Harissa Mansuri Rad was another desperate parent. On the floor begging for a answer, anything to keep my daughter alive. I mean, <laughs> that's how serious her condition was. Her daughter Yasmina was born at 23 weeks, weighing just one pound. She was born too early and had to have a lot of oxygen to survive. Yazi is blind, has cerebral palsy, and later developed a life-threatening condition requiring spinal surgery after her intestines collapsed. It was really a really scary time, and um, we didn't know if she was gonna make it. Uh, tell the people how old you are. I'm 14. But today, Parisa says she has hope. Yazzie takes CBD oil and wears the patch to get the plant's benefits. She was like on a myriad of pharmaceuticals that weren't working, and now she's only on cannabis, which is miraculous. Her mainstream doctors are all like, wow, this is remarkable. This is a different Yazzie. Parisa knows her decision to medicate with marijuana doesn't sit well with all parents. But she's speaking out because she feels obligated to share the secret to her daughter's success with other families who are suffering. We're not just out here trying to dope up our kids. We're trying to save them. Very compelling stories there. And although Dr. Guthrie referred to research, there's almost no research specifically on children with special needs who use cannabis. Uh, those advocacy groups that you just saw there, they're taking their stories to lawmakers next month to try and get autism on the list of qualifying conditions for medical marijuana. Yeah, so that would be a big difference for the state of Arizona. Are there other states that already do this where autism is a qualifying condition? So there's two states where autism is a qualifying condition, uh, Delaware uh, and then Pennsylvania only for adults with autism.
So uh, right now, uh, there's there's other advocacy groups in seven states, so they're growing, and uh, you know we'll see what happens in in the coming years. Yeah, it's very interesting because you have these parents who've tried just about everything, so they're saying pharmaceuticals or something like cannabis, and they're willing to try anything. You know so. what? As parents, wouldn't we do anything that we can to if try and change the quality difference. of life for our kids? So you can't really judge these moms. Uh, they found some relief, um, wow. and they want other people to know about it. So you can see that it's made a difference for those kids. Mm -hmm. Thank you.